Hello, my name is uh, Jan Ginnett, and it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you about the Eisenhorn 25 years of stirred milling. Uh, this presentation has been prepared for CIM 2021, and um, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Hans Duwal, based in South Africa, and Glenn Stephen, my colleague, based in Brisbane. We're um, presenting from Brisbane, Australia, so I'd like to say good morning, and I hope you enjoy the presentation. A bit of the agenda. So what we're going to do is talk about the Eisenhower history, how it works, the factors involved in that, which make it an excellent ap application for leaching, and how that led to the Albion process, how the Eisenhower market works, so where we operate, what mills we have out there, a bit on the signature plot to get an understanding of how we derive the specific energy. And the stuff where I feel the most interest is going to be looking at the footprint reductions we've done, coarse grinding, how we can use acoustics and the different materials involved. And ultimately, this all leads up into our vision of the future where we have the full Eisenhower Jemison cell circuit and all the benefits that go with that. So uh, let's, get, let's get started. A um, bit on the background, uh, with mining deposits, typically coarse-grained ore bodies are prefer preferentially selected against fine-grained ore bodies. This is on a capex basis. The finer you go to liberate, the more energy is required. So logically, it makes sense. However, um, in Mount Isa, the late 1980s, the liberation, the ore bodies they were treating at the time dictated that they needed to get towards seven microns to be able to effectively liberate and achieve the grade recovery targets they had. And ultimately, at this grind size, it affected the economics of the MacArthur River project. So. Once this was, came to be, we established a problem where we needed to find a old solution to be able to grind seven microns. And this process is what derived and effectively is how the Eisenhower came to be. A lot of test work was done on site and it, it was validated that seven microns was the grind size it needed to achieve. First things first, conventional mining technology were tested at the time. We looked at the bore mills, tower mills, and found they were ineffective below 20 to 30 microns. And the reason for this was power consumption to achieve this target grind size was significant. And the introduction of steel media into the process started to impact surface chemistry and actually inhibited the performance, which was something we wanted to move away for. So what we needed to do is look outside in the mining industry to find a technology that could achieve ultra-fine grinding while using inner media. And ultimately, this is where we started the process and came to be with our partner, Netsch, at Germany, in Germany. Um, Netsch were a supplier of uh, small horizontal bead mills. They were they're quite renowned in the pharmaceutical paint and food industry. And these mills are small batch scale mills using very expensive exotic media types at the time. Now, the concept worked. The horizontal mill showed it was able to achieve this on pilot scale in the mining industry. And what we had to do is find a way to make it work on a full scale application. So these mills uh, that Netsch provided were about one to four liters and that was significantly smaller than what we needed. So we needed to upscale it, find a way to make it continuous and use cheap media, which at the time was lead slag slash sand to be able to do this with a low OPEX and make it work. And ultimately through a lot of R&D testing, the Eisenhower came to be and up on the top right is a picture of the ones that were installed back in the early 1990s. So how did it work? So we pump in slurry at about 150 kPa. It enters a completely sealed vessel. And in that mess of vessel, we have a ceramic media loading, or sand, um, but mostly it's ceramic media these days, of about 70%. The shaft is a fixed speed shaft that then turns and spins these um, discs we have in the mill at a tip speed of around 20 meters per second. What this does is it creates a significant agitated environment that causes your coarser material to move to the edges and allow your finer material to move through the center. As the material moves through the mill, it gets towards this rotor as seen in the yellow, the yellow rotor in the picture you can see in front of you. And the gap between the last disc and this rotor is specifically designed 
to be able to create forces to help create a back current. And what this does is towards the edges of the mill, it creates a back pressure that keeps material from moving forward. So the only way out the mill is through the center. And this is what effectively allows us to have the mill an open circuit and creates the sharp cut size that you see in most mills today. The mill itself um, is typically eight, eight or seven discs with varying internal configurations. We optimize the mills per the site's requirements. So very, very, very rarely do you see the same mill internals on every site. And this is because we have different optimized maintenance strategies for different commodities in different parts of the world. The mill itself, we recommend that we can feed a F80 of 300 to 400 microns. Um, with a top size of one millimeter. There is a misconception that the eyes mill itself is designated only for ultrafine grinding um, because the media selection is the defining factor for your feed limitations with F80s. If you don't have enough the right size media, you're not going to be able to break down the coarsest particle when you could have issues. Therefore, it's very important to do this correctly. We've been recently doing a whole lot of R&D on this in the late and found we're starting to push the limitations up where the 400 microns, we've seen it go up to 650 microns at least with no significant issues. Now back to that rotor. So the rotor is important because of the classification of the cut size. The What we look at is the core size index, which is your P98 to P80 ratio. While different mill types can have the same P80, they will not have the same P98. The finer the P98 is, the better it is, particularly when you're looking at leaching applications, because your leach extraction objective is not achieved unless you get that sharper cut. And this is specifically why the isomers led on to an Albion application, which is our oxidative leach process. I just wanted to give you a quick example of an Albion process. So this is gold, and um, which is one of the more common selected processes. And in this case, the ice mill is done deliberately to break down an F80 of say 70 plus down to about eight to 10 microns. What this is doing is it's grinding fine enough to get past that passivation layer. And then the Albion process is taking that ultra fine grind and then putting it through an oxidative leach by using um, supersonic oxygen injection through the hypersparge. By doing this, you could do it in a safe environment that allows gold dissolution to be done in a very controlled way, in a very safe way allows you to improve your recovery. The Albion process is not specifically limited to gold and silver. Uh, this can be done in base metals as well, but the key part of it is the ultrafine grind, which the Eisenhower does. And part of that is the rotor and the optimization from that. Now, the market share. The Eisenhower is over a series of commodities. Uh, one of the biggest, this is our stored power, is in platinum group metals where a significant number of mills are installed in the platinum industry down at Anglo. While lead zinc is the next biggest, or one of the biggest, uh, with our Mount Isa mines from the Carth River, and copper is another big commodity. As you can see, we're over a lot of different things, gold, magnesite, tin, coal, and so there's a lot of experience throughout. The installation by size is another one. The M10,000 is our most popular mill. And with our naming convention, what we do is the mill is the M, and the number afterwards is the volume the mill can hold. This graph is particularly important because what we found is there's a significant number of M10,000s, and what this has led to is knowing that the um, an environment where we can introduce the M7500, which is a more competitive kilowatts per capex, and the M20,000, which could take away a number of these mills and make us more competitive across the range and be similar to our competitors. Um, overall though, we we're quite excited and we have been expanding the mill range of late. Now, signature plot. Signature plot is a very particular process where we derive specific energy requirements. The specific energy is not the same as the bond work index because under 100 microns, we find the bond work can be reliable due to the calculations involved. The M4 specific energy test is a batch pendulum process where all the particles are fed through the mill once, the mill achieves steady state, and it can be done on any M4 isomer. This allows us to ensure one-to-one -one scale up 
when these tests are performed in a credited lab. What that means is the ore type, size, media size, media density will translate all the way up to a full scale mill and the specific energy will be the same. We've tested this along a series of commodities and here's an example of them. We've got gold, oh, well, sorry, copper at Kumtor, platinum, the Anglo, lead zinc, MacArthur River, magnetite, which is Ernest Henry and Arium here, and lead zinc at Mount Isa. What you're, uh, what you're seeing is plant surveys that are done after the fact line up and they sit on the same curve. This is particularly important if you're looking at your project economics, which is dependent on liberation. If you couldn't do a project such as MacArthur River, where you're achieving seven microns, it severely have, heavily impacts the economics. And this is why specific energy on a one-to-one -one scale up is vitally important. Now, the exciting stuff. Uh, we've done a few changes to the layout. We recognize the older design was large, um, took up a lot of civils, had a large footprint, and ultimately it's not what people want, not what people want now. We have been talking to a lot of people out in the industry and they identified the need to reduce capex costs and footprint and we've listened and we've developed this new product. We've um, been able to lower the mill to one meter off the floor and we've done this by moving the media hopper away from underneath and now use the rotor and the back pressure generated from it to use it for media loading. This allowed us to reduce civil infrastructure by a significant amount. We recognized the rails it used to be a fixed installation, but we could remove them now. So now the rails are removable. Now the mill itself can be done by put by a roadway, any other area, and the lay down area is relatively tight and relatively small. We've tied in the land water directly into the plant and the isocharger water and went through the valve selection and basically optimize them for cost versus design. And ultimately by doing this, we've reduced the cost by up to about 28%. And this is significant. And as you can see in the picture on your right, this new footprint now fits in the um, footprint of a existing vertical mill of the same kilowatt basis. And going on to this, um, I really wanted to show you in a little bit more detail and particularly the lay down area required. With the removable rails, the eyes mill needs about 4.7 meters of extra space to be able to do maintenance. In comparison to a competitor, where they need an extra 16.5 meters of lay down area, you can see that the eyes mill itself sits in the footprint at a reduction of height of 16 meters. By having this horizontal configuration, you have improved safety without working at heights and you have much faster maintenance turnarounds. And this is where we're really proud of the mill being able to sit in the footprint of other computer models. Now, as I touched on earlier with the different mills available, we realized that the Eisen mill was uncompetitive in the 2200, 5000 and kilowatt, 6000 kilowatt range. Therefore, we brought the M7500, M20000 and M30000 on the market. These are seen in the diagram on the right. We've employed the same scale up principles that we did from the M3000 to the M10000 all the way up to the M50000. Right now, the M15000 is a large installed mill. However, we've recently got uh, sales, sales for three to four M20000s, which are due to be commissioned at the end of next year, which will be our largest mills installed. But ultimately, we are listening, we do like feedback, and we do try to take into account what you have been asking of us. Now, coarse grinding. Coarse grinding is a big one. Um, as alluded to at the start, coarse grinding is a function of media size. When we initially did the test work for coarse and media, we only used up to 6 mil media and had a limitation of FA of 400 microns. There are several new medias available that are greater than 6 millimeters. This allows you to expand the range, but ultimately the mill itself can easily handle less than 400 microns through using the right media selection as dictated in the matrix you can see in front of you. Our typical single stage brines are about a reduction ratio of eight for a particular media type. But if you wish to go further than this, there is series grinding opportunities, which some sites have done, such as Corbin, 
um, which has a series of mills and series. And this allows you to optimize your media selections and mills and run it a lot better. Uh, ultimately, now um, we've been doing grinding up to 650 microns relatively easy with the six mil media. Conical spaces. There was another article that was put out a few months ago, or 18 months ago now, about conical spaces. And what these do is they improve energy efficiency opportunities by causing a 22% reduction in isomal drawn power. And how this works is basically the media momentum is conserved as it passes through the kidney, it hits the side of the conical spacer, accelerates, and as you conserve that momentum, you get a better improvement in specific energy. And this is particularly apparent when you look towards the old refines, which would prove on a pilot scale and a full scale mill installation, which you can see in the middle picture here. Acoustics. Uh, we can detect abnormal isomer performance with acoustics. Uh, we've developed a series of acoustic accelerometers that interpret the stress waves from the impact of grinding media and slurry on the shell liner. Understanding this profile can give you an indication of failures within the mill and able to be able to profile it and give you an understanding of where. We can also interpret this information and look at particle size. And this helps predict our wear while being able to provide better control of media loading and control of the mill. We have a series of uh, materials we've tested and we've been doing this for 25 years. We've developed a whole series of compounds such as Juro 60 and 70, which is a harder heat resistant rubber through on tests within mills we have access to. We install these pizza flanges and do monitor test checks on them against standards to see which materials we can use. And through this, we've developed configurations for acid raffinates, high pH slurries and normal base metal applications. We've tested a lot of materials over 25 years. We're happy to talk to you about them, but ultimately the 25 years of history into materials is what's gone into this. I was annoying. Um, so Ozenoi um, is a new mill of the mill that was looking at commissioning next year. It's an 800 ton per hour lead zinc concentrator where we've replaced 74 tank cells into 19 Jameson cells and less than half the footprint. In this, we've installed the three new M20,000s with five megawatts motors and our commissioner in Q4 2022. As you can see in the top right, there is the um, footprint of the mills and sales compared to each other in the conventional layout. And please note this is a marketing drawing versus the actual height of the building, which is needed. In cold climates, we feel the smaller footprint and reduction in height is significant, particularly with the Eisen mill for the regrind stage. And that has allowed it to become a very competitive product of the future. We also have another full Jameson cell circuit, which is due for commissioning later this year at New Britannia, which will be very exciting. Um, with the footprint reduction on the um, Ozone, I'd like to show you the um, dimensions of the plant. And as you can see, there's a significant change. And this is just the top of the equipment. With the Jameson cell Eisenhower layout, you don't need the same crane inch requirements, which is the reason for the reduction in footprint and height. Here, just a line on height difference, you're looking at seven meters for the Jameson cell circuit, including the extra seven to nine you would need for lifting agitators out in a conventional design. Anyhow, uh, that was it. I'd love to be able to answer any questions, so please feel free. And if you have any questions in North America, please, I'd like to put you in touch with our sales contact, Scott Marson. Thank you.